Hi guys, my name is Warren, and today I'm going to be demoing a couple of our tools that we'll be releasing soon for Unreal Engine. And in this demo today, we're just going to be working with a Mixamo character. Um, and we're going to be using some of our tools to kind of showcase uh, what we do with characters and how do we get things kind of working better uh, in general for a animation rigging workflow in Unreal Engine. So you can see here that this is like a common character that we downloaded off of Mixamo. And you can see that it follows some conventions that may or may not follow with a lot of things that you're commonly familiar with inside of Unreal Engine. Uh, one of the things being that Mixamo characters in this case don't have a root bone. So you can see this red line here denoted by an offset root. And it's also got its own naming conventions uh, that it prefers to use for its bones. So a lot of the times when we want to try to get this working inside of Unreal, uh, it takes a little bit of time to get a rig set up working. So we're just kind of kind of show how we're, our tools kind of gets around this, right? So we're just going to drop this into our mesh fixer tool. Uh, you can see quickly that it already does some smart uh, name mapping. So you can see here that we have hips that are kind of already aligned to pelvis. We have a spine chain that's denoted by spine start. And just down the line, it's got some just naming mappings that we kind of threw together that uh, just kind of lines up everything uh, accordingly. So you don't have to actually do too much work. Uh, we've already kind of coded this thing to be working with Mixamo class characters. So you can see that the mappings are pretty much one to one with the standard um, epic uh, character bone names. So with this, we can also note that we don't have a, a root bone, as we mentioned before. Uh, but we do have this checkbox here that says inject root bone. So what this will do is it will create a new skeleton and a new skeletal mesh, and it'll have a new root bone uh, on there after this is all said and done. Uh, we're going to dive into how this works and provide the blueprints for you guys. For if you guys want to do this on your own for your own Mixamo characters towards the end of the video, but just stick around and we're going to kind of go through how this kind of all works together. So now we've kind of loaded the Mixamo mesh in here. We're in create mode. We hit this button and it's going to build us a new skeletal mesh. So from here, it after it was done, it kicks us into edit mode and loads up our newly generated mesh. So you can see here that if we dive into this new one that we created, everything is kind of dandy. So you can see here that we have a root bone. It's actually situated at origin with the proper uh, orientation. And we have the pelvis, which we used to be the hip, and everything's kind of aligned to the x-axis primary standard that you're kind of familiar with, with working with other characters in Unreal Engine. So you can see here that if we go back to the original mesh, uh, it was y-axis down the spine, spine chain here. So, oh, so we're going to go back up here, go back up here. Let's go down the spine chain. So you can see it's the y-axis. And then it kind of changes a bit uh, down the arm. Uh, but now we have kind of a convention that we're kind of more familiar with. And the bones are also named the same, which is cool. So what else can we do from here? So if we right click our skeleton mesh here, and then we go to create, and we go to a modular rig. So this is the new feature that was introduced in, I think, 5.3, 5.4, I think 5.4 uh, or 5.3, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but yeah, Epic did give us some pretty good modules to work with as a base template. We kind of built our own to do a bit more advanced stuff. Uh, so from here, what we can see here is I'm going to just hit I just hit delete on the default root module that is created. We're going to be using our own modules that we created here for this demo. So we're just going to hit compile just so the skeleton doesn't go crazy here. We're going to drop in our root. And you can see here it kind of looks the same as the root, but we have a lot of other goodies inside that you'll see as we move along. So we just drop in the spine. And you can see here that we have a spine setup that's very similar to Manny. And then we drop in our neck. And then we drop in our shoulder. And we drop in our arm here or here. And then we also have the fingers. So what we can do inside modular controller, if this is your first time seeing it, is you can just select these sockets, shift click, shift click, shift click, shift click. Now that we have all, all selected, we just drop a finger module in there and we have our fingers. Cool. Now, next thing we want to do is the legs. So we drop in a leg module, bam. Uh, and then we drop in a foot module here. Uh, let's see, where's the foot module here? And we just have to go through and do some quick renaming so that we can get the modules mapped to the other side. So we just call the shoulder L, arm L. So bear with me a bit while I kind of quickly rename these guys. Thumb L. 
And I'm just going to fix this real quick be just because this character has a weird fourth thumb that we didn't compensate for. Uh, just to make sure that it's all nice and dandy. Call this index L. Call this middle L. And ring L. And pinky L. Is not. And then we just got the legs to do this really quick. So if you're in 5.5, five, um, this is going to be a bit nicer. Uh, the list has filters that you can kind of make it nice and short. But right now we're not in 5.5, five, we're in 5.4. So we're just going to kind of quickly grab all our newly renamed left side modules. I'm going to hit mirror. I'm going to call this underscore L to underscore R. And it's going to do a transfer of the controls from one side over to the other. Uh, while you do this, you'll see that, let me just hit compile again. You'll see that the right side shoulder is a bit weird. Uh, that's because when we mirrored, it actually changed our variables with our mirror axis. So we're just going to flip that over and this should make it nice uh, and working for everything else. So I'm just going to do this. Yeah, just leave this alone actually for now. So yeah, so, oh, sorry, we just did it for the fingers too. So yeah, when we mirrored it, uh, all these things that used to be one turned into negative ones. So we're just going to quickly do this. Um, and the reason what we're doing this right now is you can see that a lot of these variables on the original uh, modules were built into a struct. We've yanked out all the variables that are, were relevant into standard variables, and this allows us for us to use these modules in UEFN as well. So this is a main reason why we kind of built it this way. So, but unfortunately, with the mirror function inside of modular rig, uh, we have our controls or our variables uh, flipped over as well. So we're just going to go and quickly uh, reconfigure these so you can see that the mirror axis is a bit weird. They're at negative one, so that's why you see the right hand is pointing down. So if you take these guys, flip it to one, and our fingers are pointing in the correct direction now. All right, so now that we have our rig here, let's just hit compile uh, and save. And let's go back to here. And we can kind of already do some cool, pretty cool stuff with it now uh, with a layered control rig. So you can see here that we got this setup here. We can already start animating it with a control rig. So with the new set up now we can also do a retarget so let's say we take our manny here we take our mix our michelle here that we just newly created and we load up a run animation on manny and we do an export with a retargeter and we just export it to that location uh, so now that we have this thing here we can drop that into here and we can have an existing retargeted animation in a layered modular control rig that we can manipulate and change with additive animations. So this is not meant to be a, an animation tutorial video by any means, but this is kind of just a quick thing to show you how to get up and started with some of our tool sets. And if you hit refresh, because we have some cool metadata that we stored on our custom uh, root node here, it will auto resolve the control board uh, based on your, your control rig that you use. So you don't actually have to click this drop down box. You could if you wanted to, but you just pretty much work in sequencer, you select the control, the control board will automatically change and update accordingly to the rig that you're working on. Uh, in the future, we're gonna demo more of how this board uh, eventually is going to work. We're gonna add a lot more goodies before we actually release this thing out into the wild. But you can see here that we can already do some pretty cool stuff with the, both the control board, as well as what, if you're used to the viewport, you can use the viewport, or you can even use the uh, sequencer if you're more used to animating inside the sequencer so yeah um i guess that's it for kind of the end-to-end -end workflow of one scenario of using a mixamo character taking it from a default state injecting a root bone uh and also moving the weights of the root bone uh to the pelvis back to the pelvis so that we don't have weights on the root bone and then going through and creating a modular control rig using the new bone names that we kind of renamed everything to and having it all line up perfectly to an existing control board that uses the same names as the standard um, epic uh, skeleton naming conventions. All right, so let's jump to how this kind of root bone uh, works. I'm going to post this in uh, on a, what is it called? A, the face bin for the blueprints, but just to quickly go through uh, how and what it's doing under the hood. So the two 
key things we want to kind of focus on is these two guys, uh, which is making a skeleton modifier and a skin weight modifier. These things are pretty much what you need to get up and running with modifying the bones names as well as weights. So you need to do the skin weight modifier to get the weights. So in the first top half of the section, so from this point upwards, we're going to be dealing with getting the rube bone in there, right? So what we're going to do is we're just going to store the current bone name. So this is going to be called, I guess it was called pelvis or hip to begin with. Or sorry, yeah, hip, not pelvis, hip to begin with. It's just going to cache the name. And then we're going to collect all the children of the current uh, hip node or hip bones rather, sorry, uh, into a list so that we can reparent them later. So then afterwards, we add a new bone underneath the current root bone, which is going to be hip. So we're actually just injecting another hip, which is going to be, a, or another bone underneath hips, which is going to be a sibling of these three bones. So it's going to sit like right here beside it. Uh, and inside of Unreal, we, unfortunately, you can't have two root bones, and you also can't move and reparent a root bone. So this is kind of uh, how we're doing it. So we're going to create a new bone. We're going to move these three guys underneath that new bone, and then we're going to transfer the weights from hips over to that bone and then rename everything back to uh, the standard. Right, so going from here, we add that new bone, which we, we were talking about, which is the sibling. And then we're going to reparent all the siblings to this new temp, the new generated bone that we created, right? So we're going to have, quote unquote, hips, our newly generated bone, and then our three sibling bones underneath it. And then finally, we're going to rename uh, our current bone down to uh, back to root node. And then we're going to take our temp bone name. Sorry, this is going to, so you can, uh, yeah, so we can rename, the, rename it to root. And we also have this other function here called reorient bone. Uh, this is also gonna, going to be on the paste bin for the blueprints. Uh, why we have to have this node is because, unfortunately, the built-in um, set bone transform function that's available for skeleton, mesh, skeleton modifier only works with, um, local transform so you can see if you move mouse over here it's local transform so in order to get global transforms working what we're doing is we're kind of cheating it we're going to parent it to nothing so you might see a uh, error warning inside of the output log you can kind of ignore that this is just us taking a bone and then unparenting it to nothing so that it's in world space then we can apply a transform onto it uh, in world space and then we can parent it back to its original parent so that it's oriented just right in global space so after we reorient uh, our root, new root bone uh, to global zero, which is the origin, we run the submit transaction or the commit action. So this, unless you run the commit on this on the modifiers, you're not going to get the see the changes. So we're going to run the, the the commit so that we can see the changes to all the bone names and the orientations. And then finally, we're just going to do a quick loop on the current. Uh, hip bone that we renamed to root, copy all the weights, and we're just going to reset them and then map them onto uh, the new uh, temp bone that we created. And you can see that we're using a replace all. So we're going to shift all of the weights over to the new bone. And same thing with the weight modifiers. We're going to run a commit to actually commit, uh, make sure that everything's going through. So that's all said and done. Uh, yeah, that's, that's all you kind of really need to do this, this function and then the reorient bone function here to get a Mixamo character without a root bone. Now taking on a root bone and having its weight transferred uh, over to pelvis. So this is actually the original hips bone here. We just renamed it to root afterwards when we created a new bone in here. So just to make sure you can see what we're talking about, we're going to switch to edit, edit weights. So you can see that the, the uh, weights are now on the second bone here under pelvis. And inside here, it's originally these weights were originally on the root bone here under hips. All right, so cool. So, I mean, I, I think there's a lot of people in the forums and on YouTube kind of trying to figure out how to get a root bone on here. And before we had to take this out into like Blender or other programs to try to get the root bone in there and also to transfer the weights. Now that we have this blueprint figured out, uh, we'll just share it with you guys and you guys can kind of do this on your own.
And hopefully this helps you guys get uh, up and running easier with Mixamo characters. And maybe you guys can expand your own workflows around getting uh, Mixamo with root bones retargeted properly. All right. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. And we'll see you guys in the next one.